Hello and welcome to the British Chamber of Commerce Singapore's podcast channel. With over 15,000 downloads since launch, we are excited to bring you Season 4 featuring in-depth content on business, global affairs and news across Singapore, ASEAN and the United Kingdom. We've had some extraordinary guests on our channel, including W Series driver Abby Eaton. And I've got thoughts of the future now. Um, you know, I'd love to, to try and kind of mentor some of the younger drivers, you know. Renowned UK international education champion, Professor Sir Steve Smith. Over about a four year period, we kept increasing the resources going into mental health provision. Chief Executive and Director of the London Design Museum, Tim Marlowe. The way we design is actually thinking about the needs of, of everyone. And CEO of the industry cluster group at JTC, Alvin Tan. If you look at PDD, we are creating an ecosystem of companies, government agencies and industry association in the digital space. Thank you, as always, for your continued support, and I hope you enjoy this podcast. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to the British Chamber of Commerce Singapore podcast channel. Uh, my name is David Kelly, and I'm the Executive Director here at the Chamber. Our podcasts bring together thought leaders from across the sectors and across demographics, from business leaders to thought leaders, tech and trade, with a lot of our content originating from our 12 fantastic business committees. Now, sustainability is an important agenda for businesses and communities around the world, and our sustainability committee is one of our key committees it's a horizontal that goes through all of our activity here at the chamber indeed the chamber went carbon neutral in 2019 we measure our impact and our co2 output and we map all of our annual activities to the un's sdgs or the sustainable development goals so it's a really important agenda for us and um, today i'm delighted to be joined by uh, jacob martin uh, deputy head of college at dulwich college singapore and whilst Jacob, or Mr. Martin, is one of our Super Sustainability Committee members. Dulwich College Singapore are also annual partners of the Chamber and provide a lot of support to us as well. Um, Mr. Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I believe you've got some very special guests that we can talk to, three of your sustainability ambassadors. Good morning or afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, David, for that uh, uh, introduction. And it's lovely to be back on the, on the podcast. We do appreciate the opportunity to uh, to be part of this and to help develop uh, uh, your community of sustainability interested persons in Singapore. So, uh, but most importantly today, uh, rather than myself uh, doing any of the talking, uh, I have brought along three uh, of our wonderful Dulles students uh, who are passionate about the area of sustainability. Um, and they are actually going to be the stars of this particular podcast. Um, so um, I think the best way of doing this is for, for me to let the students introduce them introduce themselves. Um, so uh, although a number of our students are involved in sustainability in lots of different ways, um, these three have all been recommended highly by teachers at the college which is why they are, um, uh, have got this opportunity to speak to you all today. So I'm going to start with uh, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte, do you want to introduce yourself? So hi, my name is Charlotte Coteau. I'm very excited to be here and I've only just moved to Singapore. So the answering these questions was also a way for me to learn more about how Singapore is trying to be more sustainable. Oh, fabulous. Hi. Welcome, Charlotte. Sorry. Hi, my name is Jess. Um, yeah, I'm also really excited to be here. Just a great opportunity, I think. Um, and yeah, just learning more about the sustainability within Singapore and you know what everyone else is kind of doing to help and to aid that process. Super, welcome, Jess. Hi, I'm Rumi, and I'm a sustainability student leader here at the college and really excited to be on this podcast today. And I'm really interested and have been really interested on in looking at how uh, others also in the youth have looked at and trying to help sustainability in Singapore. Fabulous, fabulous. Well, look, a very warm welcome to all three of you. Great to have you with us and thank you for your time. Um, I guess a question for, for, for all of you is, um, you know, sustainability is such a massive topic, isn't it? Um, and I think we've all got different lenses of what it means to us. But I guess just for all three of you, um, starting perhaps with, with Charlotte, what what is your understanding of sustainability? What does it what does it what does it mean to you? So to me, um, sustainability is 
about providing current generations with resources available without depriving future generations from having access to them as well. Um, while balancing like economic growth, um, the care for our environment surrounding us, and also maintaining a healthy social well-being. Um, and to me, it's really significant as it keeps current generations safe um, and again provides us with a healthy lifestyle, as well as providing a certainty for the following generations to have a bright future ahead of them. And I think it's also valuable because it provides us with equality around the world. It teaches teaches us generosity and kindness. Like we all live on the same planet. So we should all be able to learn to share the resources that nature has given to us um, equally. And oh, everyone great. should have a same chance at life. Oh, great stuff. Thanks, Charlotte. And Jess, what about, what about you? What does sustainability mean to you? Um, for me, it's, it's actually a very center part of who I am. Um, I'm from South Africa, so a lot of what happens there is it should be centered around sustainability and it's typically not what they do. So, um, yeah, I just really want to make a change, really want to make an impact. Um, it's something that doesn't just come under environmental, it comes under social, it comes under political. When you have sustainability, you have prospects, you have hope for the future, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's it's very personal to me and it's something that incorporates a lot of aspects i think um yeah super and and Rumi, what about yourself yeah i agree with um jess and charlotte uh, especially as how uh, sustainability has so many little things that are involved in that you know that term but i'm really looking forward to try and continue to act and st solve the problem of sustainability as there's so many things that can be done to protect the environment Super. And Rumi, just, just sticking with you, um, can you tell us how your interest in sustainability has developed and how the issues around it have developed as well and how, how you've been on that journey? So my first real interest began when I was able to, you know, use social media to listen to sustainability activists online and to, of course, watching the news as well. And this helped me gather um, that sustainability is one of the biggest challenges that we have faced in the recent times and how it also in particular affects the youth. And I wanted to try and take an active role in being part of the solution. But in particular, one specific event that really ignited my interest was the summer of 2019 in the UK. So usually when I go to the UK in the summer to visit my family and friends, the temperatures are quite consistent and um, throughout the years and 15 to 20 degrees. However, this summer was completely different and the temperatures increased rapidly and we were recorded one of the hottest days in UK's history during that summer. And so seeing these uh, rising heat temperatures uh, was particularly very astonishing for me. And I knew I had to make an active change, which uh, came with the opportunity of becoming a sustainability student leader at Dulwich College and this um, the challenge of making Dulwich a more sustainable school. Oh, super. Um, Jess, just coming back to you, have you... Have you come across the sustainable development goals in your lessons at school? And do you feel young people are aware of them enough? Um, so actually, the sustainable development goals are, the, are actually the main part of geography lessons, but also they make a feature in English lessons and they physics lessons too. So it's not just we're not just looking at the again, the environmental side, but also how we can how the sustainable goals you know, incorporate into literature and into physics and what we're trying to do in the future. Um, but I think young people in Singapore are more aware of them than they were in previous years. I know since the Millennium Goals were changed into the Sustainable Development Goals, it has really skyrocketed and obviously with the use of social media as well, um, awareness has definitely improved. Um, and I think we begin to see the growing impact of climate change on more vulnerable communities as well. Um, especially through the news and like Rumi said, especially in in areas like the UK where you would think, you know, the infrastructure there is going to hold or you, we see these rising temperatures and summer heat waves and now this winter vortex that we've just had and we've just seen. Um, it, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very important that these sustainable development goals are being incorporated into these lessons and young people are aware of them because that will inevitably shape how we deal with solutions in the future um not just locally but globally um and in singapore it's i think it's one of the most vital things uh because obviously there should be a you know 
a lot more should be done. Charlotte. And just continuing on on the rising temperatures, I actually went uh, skiing over the winter uh, just last week. And it was it was nice. I loved it. I go to Veltohans, which is one of the ski resorts, which is the highest in Europe. Um, and it has rained and it's unusual for it to rain. And um, the lower ski resorts, they were they were out of completely out of snow and they're usually not at this period of time. Um, and it usually snows a lot. And even where I was, they had to use the snow cannons, which aren't even which aren't really sustainable either because they consume a lot of energy but just adding on to that it's quite scary especially as a person who loves the cold and the mountain to be losing that is quite sad and like uh, i think it's as jess said it's really important that these sustainable goals are included in the lessons to make a change so a visual impact not only in your ski resorts yeah. but also the businesses that are operating those ski resorts are going to have yeah, a, an issue in the future as well so no, that's really really important lens R rumi what about yourself yeah, linking to the SDGs and if young youth you know, that they know about them. I was doing a program for Dulwich with the United Nations, which involved the whole of the Asia Pacific and about 30 students or so who were chosen by other schools, especially in Hong Kong and in Japan. And they also knew a lot about sustainability and the SDG goals. And this gave me a lot of encouragement that there are many people out there that are young and youth that want to try and help and be more sustainable. That's hugely encouraging, hugely encouraging. And Charlotte, when, when you look around Singapore, um, I know you've only sort of you've only been in Singapore fairly fairly recently, but um, what sustainability questions or challenges do you feel young people are most interested in and how can they get a bit more involved? So I think that young people are mostly interested. I think one of the big things since in Singapore, it's hot all year round. Air conditioning is a big factor to our daily lives. But when you look around um, and you go into a mall, it's really cold, a lot colder than the outside air temperature. I'd say it's usually between 25 and 30 degrees outside and air conditioning will go down like the air will go down to, to like between 16 and 20 degrees. So why are temperatures inside a lot colder compared to the inside? Um, and I think that's at least for me that's a question that's ris risen a lot like I sleep with my air conditioning at 26 but I have friends who sleep with below 20 and you know it just made like why would people do that how can we change that how can we make that more sustainable um, and also 95% um, of Singapore's electricity comes from natural gas but there are alternative sources that aren't as damaging to the environment uh, such as um, nuclear and solar power. So, how could Singapore, um, how could Singapore improve on on that? And um, people are getting involved. The community of Singapore are getting involved, such as in planting more trees and creating green parks for the public all around the city. Um, but people also have other motivations, such as creating green, the green parks for. Um, an opportunity for the population of Singapore to go out more and lead a healthier lifestyle. So being more sustainable also comes with um, bringing more joy and uh, health into people's lives. Um, and Singapore has a goal of planting 1 million trees by 2030. And we've already planted uh, 400,000. So I think people are mostly getting involved in planting more trees. I think that's for now Singapore's main goal. Yeah, just picking up on some of those things that you've said um, before I come to Jess, um, I think the Minister of Sustainability and the Environment will love what you just said, um, because she's implored everybody to try and raise their air conditioning in their offices by one degree to try and make that a little bit of a difference so we yeah. can all move. And there's lots and lots of things going on around the energy transition piece here in Singapore, and certainly our Energy and Utilities Committee do a lot in that space as well. So we'd be delighted to keep you posted on that too. You know, some really good insights. And Jess, how about you? I'm just adding on to what Charlotte said, just... In general, Singapore actually, you know, one of the main aspects of Singapore that everyone knows is that their education is highly rated, that all that kind of thing. <laughs> and um, Singapore as a whole, even though they, you know, employ education, are they actually doing some of the stuff that we learn about in class? Like I know I've learned about solar panels and wind turbines and all these methods of creating green energy, but are we seeing that, you know, being in implemented into the city? You know, so many things that could be added that we are seeing so i think as the youth in singapore it's quite i don't want to say frustrating but it is it is a bit like 
if we're learning about this, then surely you guys can be implementing this just as easily, you know, um, and especially with all the funding behind it and the government's ob obvious willpower to then, you know, plant trees and, you know, want to see a difference in um, what we're doing as a city. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely more that Singapore could be doing, um, but just raising awareness about that is taking a step forward. So, yeah. Great stuff. Jess, just sort of sticking with you, how, 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 how do you think we can attract more young people like yourselves um, to become more involved in sustainability? You talked about education, but is, 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 there, is there a wider agenda that we can try and help with to support getting more youth into, into supporting where, where, how we drive a planet that we want to live in in the future? For sure. I think that, um, you know, education is just the first step, really. I think uh, the growing subject of sustainability as a whole is being raised, uh, raised on, really, like, raised and commented on mostly through most social media platforms like TikTok, like Instagram, that all the youth in Singapore has. We have very easy access to, to platforms like these. And so, you know, we are getting direct information, especially from those platforms. And I think if we were to use utilize those platforms more, the youth would definitely become more involved. And I think especially if it's the youth that are trying to raise awareness and take on that responsibility and, you know, ha like create action towards some of these problems that we're seeing, I think that, you know, the, the overall initiative would definitely increase and we'd see a lot more um, young people get involved. And with myself, um, stuff that are centered around the IB that we're doing right now um, for my EE, I'm hoping to focus on literally the design of wind turbines in relation to efficiency so that in the future we will you know hopefully make it cheaper make it more accessible we can put it literally anywhere and over overrun the use of fossil fuels and unsustainable methods of um, electricity generation um so you know even in our education systems even in our daily use of social media which i know a lot of people use um, a lot um you know, young people are willing to take action, young people are willing to get involved. So it's just about actually doing it and taking action rather than just talking about it. Um, but yeah. And do you have a view of how we do that? So how, 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 do, how do you think sort of from, from your perspectives that we try and get businesses to help try and drive it? How do we try and shape the political agenda with the view of youth? And how, how do we try and do it in a, in a, in a non-aggressive way, but that's sort of more inclusive? Do you, have you got any ideas around that? Um, so yeah, like before social media, but that what tends to happen is a little bit of greenwashing where businesses say, oh yes, we are going to do this. We are going to do that. And we actually don't follow them through. We don't see it through and young people don't really hold them accountable. But I think that, you know, there's two sides to this where actually we need to hold them accountable, but to the point where we don't want to then, you know, council culture is a big thing. We don't want to then. Um, say you're not doing enough when we as ourselves personally should be doing exactly what the business is doing and exactly what we say we should be doing. Um, but in a way, like on social media, that you can get out your message and get out your actions yeah. that you're doing um, just by showing people that you care and are not just in a, we are going to do this and don't make you know any actions, don't take any steps towards actually improving the situation. Oh, good answer. Good answer. Um, I guess a couple of key takeaways, really. Um, what would the three of you like to sort of see change in the world as you as, as you grow up in? I mean, we always ask a ask a question of um, uh, for all of our guests on, on this channel, which is if we gave you the British Chamber of Commerce time machine and you can look back at what you know now and you could give yourself some advice. But actually, from your three perspectives, I think it'd be really great to look forward. So if we gave you that time machine and we dialed it the other way and we can say we can put you in in the future by 15 or 20 years, where do you see yourselves being and and doing and where would you like the world to be from a sustainability perspective? Rumi, perhaps I can start with you. Yeah, I think that we need to act immediately. So I'd like to see a lot more participation from everyone, not just the youth or you know, other generations, all the generations working together to try and make a change. And I think we can start off with like simple steps that, which can still have a big impact now, which, as we said, um, as Charlotte said, with the air conditioning, or we can even take shorter showers, simple things that have been said before, but still not being done. I think that as long as we continue these simple steps, they can have a big impact in the future. Super. And where do you see yourself in 15, 20 years time, Ruby? Well, I think 
uh, I want to continue to work on sustainability and be a you know, sustainability activist, trying to make others change as well, and also help continue to change and make the world a better, more sustainable place. Super, super. And Charlotte, same questions to you. Um, well, it's quite um, high reach, but like, I'm hoping that one day we won't have to talk about climate change anymore. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm hoping um, is going to happen in the future. Just the topic's gone. It's not even learnt in school anymore. Um, I think it, it is important that it's being learnt, but I would rather it's being learnt in history class rather than geography. Mm -hmm. um, and then where do I see myself? To me, that's quite a, a difficult question because um, I still don't know where I want to go, what I want to do, but I'm just hoping that I'm doing something that I love and helping the environment around me. Oh, super. Good answers so far. And Jess, same questions to you. Um, so, yeah, similar to what Charlotte and Rumi have both just said, um, it's really important that um, in the future we are talking about climate change as in a thing in the past or a thing that can even be bettered. Um, and it's, it's almost a... It's almost like a, a topic that students roll their eyes at every now and again because we are taught it so mm -hmm. much. We are, we are, it's drilled into us from a very, very young age. And I think that's the difference between what I learned and what my parents have learned. But even if mm -hmm. my parents didn't learn it at school, um, I think the younger generation need to implore the older generation to come and help us to, you know, to show us what to do, how to do it. And similar to what Charlotte said, in the future, I'm not particularly sure what I want to do but definitely centered around actually making a change and get, uh, doing act, the actions that need to that need to be done in order to um, see this change. Um, so yeah, definitely, but definitely something around green energy and um, actually aiding that uh, aiding the green energy situation and um, just yeah, making it a little bit more accessible, especially to vulnerable communities that actually need it the most. So, oh, yeah. Brilliant. And would it make a difference to the three of you? Would you I mean, would you choose a job based on a company being more sustainability orientated and actually doing something to change the planet rather than not? Would you be more money orientated, for example, or would you go for, would you work for an organization that was more sustainability driven? I think sustainability. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Yeah. I think as also if, it's, if you love sustainability, like I feel that we do, I think the sustainability orientated is a lot more important for me. Um, but also, it's. It, I think that's a question that is kind of contradicting itself, because I think that's where the money is going. It's going into sustainability. Mm -hmm. It's going into companies that that's are true. looking to make sure that they are in the future and they are working with the younger generation who have the view of sustainability. So, yeah. And like from this mm. choice of going to a more sustainable uh workplace i think it just shows you care uh, about the environment yeah well great stuff well when you when the three of you start going into the workplace and you start turning jobs down because you're all three of you are brilliant and um, please tell them um businesses you know why you didn't take the job and if it is about sustainability maybe that's one of those levers that we can pull with the youth as they as you come into into the working environment to uh, to, to really sort of give people like me who are running the businesses the opportunity to help shape some change for the future charlotte Jess, Rumi, it's been brilliant to have you with us. Thank you so, so much for your insights. I think you're superb sustainability ambassadors and we'd love to keep in touch with you and we'd love to make sure that we try and make sure that um, anything that's coming out of our sustainability committee, we, we link back to the activities that you're doing in school because that's been a really great conversation. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Thank for, you for having, having us. us. Yeah. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the British Chamber of Commerce Singapore's podcast channel. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and why not leave us a rating and review on Spotify, Apple, Google and the other podcast platforms. For more information about the Chamber, please visit our website at www.britcham.org.sg and tune in next time for a brand new episode.